What's key for you guys, especially off the opening draw tonight, coming off a layoff? Well, we have certain things that we're good at, right? We're a really strong forechecking team, and that will be uh, not so much how much we create off the forecheck, but make sure that the event happens enough that we can we can do what we do well. That'll be the first tell. It's been a block of time, but it's unusual because it's in March and nobody ever gets this block of time usually in March. And we needed it even with a thin schedule. You've always got some guys that have lingering things that we've been able to clean up a little bit, uh, pushed them hard, but also gave them some recovery time. So with a mind that, that it's tonight and we're solely focused on tonight, but we got a big block of games coming up here. So we wanted to make them uh, help them recover and then heal up as well. How do you explain your success versus a good one? I don't know whether I ever felt that. I think we caught, caught each team. Some teams, you always the schedule says you always catch them at a really bad time for you, and sometimes it's a good time. I felt we've caught them at a good time kind of for us. They've had been banged up a lot when they come in. But early in games and in stretches of games, I, I, never, felt, I never felt that way to the final score. There was one that got away from them there in Montreal. Um, and, and now they're at a completely different mindset than they were, you know, two months ago. Things have changed. They're not going to make the playoffs, but they've got, uh, they've shown to be very resilient now, right? If they, if they lose the game, they come back. That was a huge win for us the other night too, especially in a game back to back that you wouldn't have expected. Pitt was Pitt's in the exact same spot that we are. So there's a, they're coming ready to play. And if you give them room, they're going to make plays and it, it'll be a good hockey game. Like that, they're, they're playing hard. Mm -hmm. Obviously, and now you have a guy like uh, Mark Dyson, who's still young, right? Yeah. Uh, what do you see in Mark Dyson? So I think there's a similar there between he and Roddy Brindamore, yeah. right? There'd be two guys that have a really great understanding of what each individual player is going through as a pro and that you don't treat everybody the exact same way, that you have a feel for the room. So he understands th those guys who were students and, and Roddy was just, you know, a rink rat his whole life. But Martin had to fight his way into the NHL too, right? So he had to scratch and claw and learn all the little details to give himself the chance to be great. We, we remember him more at the end, Stanley Cup champion, incredible point producer, but you also have to go back to look at how he started. So he has, he's unusual to, be, to become such a great player, but at the start of your career, grinder's not the word, but to have to fight your way and to get waved, to have to fight your way into an NHL lineup, it allows him to understand his entire room. Certainly he understands the game and the emotions. So it's not easy in the situation that he's in, uh, all those injuries that they have playing in the market that he plays and that demands excellence no matter where you're at, to keep them motivated. So he's done a marvelous job of keeping the spirit of, in his room alive. I think my fourth game was in the forum in Montreal too. So when you started that question, I thought, yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> continue to be a topic of conversation. Yeah. How do you eliminate those while still playing with that emotion? The, we, there's a whole bunch of factors going into that. One of them is <clears throat> a change in style of game to a much harder gapped game, which means you're more physically confrontational on every puck and we've got to do a better job with our sticks. It is a learning curve and a process. We took some penalties in the last two games, though, that we cannot take. Um, so we just watched them, went through it, talked about it, and it'll be part of our program. At this time of year, it can be the difference between making the playoffs and not one penalty. So we have to be really diligent with our sticks tonight. That's the area. The, the roughing penalties after the whistle, that the game creates that and so much. It's not necessarily our team. The, the, the sticks that come off the ice, I'm thinking mostly of the high sticks. Those are the ones that, that, that we, can, we own. We got to be better there. Have you gotten a little frustrated with those? It seems like not seemingly one of those at night. One of those. Yeah, you, I, I have been because that's not a call you can argue, right? You get it on the video. You clip a guy in a visor, whether he goes down like he shot or not. That's got nothing to do with you. Um, yeah, I mean that. That's all part of learning how to play hard every night, every shift. We we play so much harder than we did. I would say starting in December, but you couldn't tell. Certainly in January, you could tell. Our compete level every night is much, much harder. We're just not used to doing it mindfully with our sticks, too. we got to keep them on the ice. What can you say about Carter Murray, who seems to be the kind of guy who fought his way through yeah, the NHL? We've got, some, we've got a little bit of those Marty St. Louis stories here because it's not just Carter. I mean, Gustav Forsling was a wayward kind of player. Sam Reinhardt, Sam Bennett both came out of kind of third and fourth line roles to really important roles here. Carter's a shooter. 
a pure shooter and, and, and unusual in that he's also not a, kind of a, a, a toe dragger playmaker where he's delaying a lot with the puck. It's on and off his stick real quick. So from a hands point of view, we kind of view him a little bit like Kyle Connor. He has this incredibly quick release that he can get the puck off. Where we're most excited about him is all the other parts of his game away from the game, the defensive parts of the game. So we look at him and we look at Anthony Duclair sometimes in the same way. For them to have the success and become really permanent fixtures, they have always felt, I got to score goals, I got to score. And it's true, they do. It's what they do well. But the limiting factor for them early on in their career was their defensive play. It, for both those guys, it's not a willingness or it's an understanding. It's a mindset when you hit the ice because every time they hit the ice, they're going, well, I might be going down, I might be getting sat out, I got to score tonight. And that changes the way you play the game. What we're hopeful with Carter especially, you hit 30, you have back-to-back, -back, you, you can relax a little bit. You just play the game, you're going to score goals, you're going to get your shot off, so you can just relax, take care of the other parts of the game, and that will get you in the lineup and get you more minutes. And Maybe he's a 40-goal guy next year. Who knows? He certainly had his chances. With Alex Lyon going down, is that just keeping him fresh for when you... I'm sorry? With Alex Lyon going Correct. down, is that just Don't keeping we, him fresh? No, we want to get him in a game. He's been off for a block of time, right? He came in at a critical part of our year. We played playoff teams, beat Boston, and then our schedule allowed us to run Sergey. And with the schedule coming up, we have back-to-back four-game weeks. We need a goal. We need another goaltender who's going to have to go in and play, so we have the opportunity to get him get him one or two games up in Toronto. It'll be a direct flight, and we'll get him right back here, and, and he's going to have to play next week. Does he meet you in Detroit, or is he coming all the way here? Uh, th that's going to all depend on how much action he gets tomorrow night, how Sergey gets through the game tonight, whether he'll back up against uh, New Jersey or not, or then we would just bring him into Detroit. How valuable, how, sorry, how valuable has it been for you to retrieve a guy like Anthony Duclair, and what can you say about the work he's done to get back? It's such a difficult injury because he is a skater first and foremost at speed. <clears throat> and then while you're rehabbing, you really can't push your legs too very hard. So, uh, and then there's a whole new, brand new system, brand new players, brand new coaching staff. He's done a marvelous job sitting in the meetings and picking up our game. So there was, when he went back in his first game, he was technically very good. He, he did, you know, we had some questions on the bench, but he picked up and he went. So I give him a lot of credit for being Mindful for six months sitting in meetings and you know you're not playing. You might sleep through half of those. I would. I do anyway. Um, <laughs> and then not be able to push kind of his money maker, his feet. He did some great work. I, I, I'll credit our performance group here too, picking, picking the right time, being patient because it took longer than we thought. But that wasn't a fault. It was just a, the right decision on his particular injury and where he was at. So when he's come back, he hasn't had any flare-ups, uh, he hasn't missed a day's practice because of it, so he's been right and ready. Any update on Patrick Mondes? No, he, he's not an option for us this year. He's training real hard, but he, he won't play for the Florida Panthers this year. Correct, playoffs. correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay, okay guys.